Yeah, those are called Yoshino cherries. Uh, they're a really brilliant white bloom in the spring. Really pretty. And we planted them when they were just little small saplings. When I first moved here, that field over there was all woods. And that dark spot right up through there is where the water would drain into here from that field. And, and I had fish in here which I would catch and eat. Okay, because they were good fish. At some point they cleaned all that woodland off of there and started converting it into farmland. Spraying it with their Roundup and their pesticides and their GMO stuff. And so now when that water comes off of that field and into the pond, my pond is contaminated. I do not feel that the fish are safe to eat in this pond anymore. Let's say you took a field like that, that has been commercially farmed and you stopped farming it. How many years would it take for nature to restore that land back to where it wasn't contaminated or poisoned with the chemicals? And I don't know the answer to that. I know. I don't yeah. think anybody but does. Nature would, but it might be 50, 100 years. I yeah. don't know, but it would. It would yeah. Yeah. People are so willing to contaminate without knowing the end result. It's yep. just all about today and how much money we can can be made. Yep. Yep, there's a little fly. Look how ragged its wings is. Yes, yeah, it's, it's on the end of its lifespan That's probably. Right. That's what that means. What I've got to try to grow some of those. They're so pretty. Or hydrangea. They're a, they're a real pretty flower. It's uh, gotten hot on them. Uh, didn't we used to call these a snowball bush? Yeah. See this flower here on the left? Ooh. This flower is called a resurrection lily. Wow. And what happens in the early spring, it will put up a whole bunch of green blades similar to this. That's an iris. And there's the dried green blades that you can see right over there. And then it'll die down, completely die down. And then in July, it'll come back with these flowers. Just Resur one stalk. And it's called the resurrection lily. Oh. There's another name for it. But. So obviously they do okay in the shade. Yeah. Something's killing the oak trees? Yep. It just fell over? Yeah. The roots of it down and then it doesn't have any anchor. So it get all up cut up. You're not going to do it yourself, are you? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. It was on out to here. It was on over to there. Oh, I see. See, and I've already cut where we have this pathway open right here. Oh, I see. There's another pathway over there that I'll have to get cut open. Oh, I see, yeah. It's something that's common everywhere because same, same things are happening all over America, all over the world probably. Well, I just think nature can only take so much abuse. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. I said there's a scripture in the Bible that says he, talking about God, will bring to ruin those ruining the earth. Ah. So this is this is not my land, not your land. No. This is God's land. Right. And we get the privilege of living here on it and we should take care of it. But we don't. Okay, you remember when you were here last that we the beans. served you something to call bitter melon? Oh that's bitter melon. <laughs> <laughs> that's bitter melon growing. My wife loves it. Let's whip on over closer to it. Everything looks so lush. Uh -huh. Remember when I was here before it was it was kind of bare. I think we probably served you some that had been in the freezer because it was too early mm -hmm. at that time to uh, now there's a butterfly and it's a different kind of butterfly. That, that butterfly is called a Gulf fritillary. I call it fritillary, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I call them friendly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean you could produce a lot of bitter melon. Well, we give a, we give away a lot. Okay. Uh, Do other people have an appreciation for it? Well. Yes and no. Know, look at those. I mean, they're beautiful. They are, uh -huh. and uh, and and the leaves are also edible. It's kind of incredible looking. I mean, it's a staple in much of uh, Asia. There's a larger one right in there. At what point do you pick them? 
Do they she, get soft? She's saving this one for seed. Oh. But that would be about where you would pick it. Okay. Right there. When you set a tender plant in the ground, there is a worm that lives here in the ground called a cutworm. And it will come in and wrap itself, actually it'll wrap itself right around the plant, just like that, and eat on the plant. And then the plant will fall over and of course it's dead. And the way you stop that cutworm is with a little piece of a stick, just like this. And you put it right down beside the plant, like that. And then when the cutworm comes in and tries to wrap itself around the tender plant, it will feel this hard stick and know that it can't chew into that and it'll go somewhere else. <laughs> so for everyone, you have to have a stick. There, you, if you look carefully, everyone has a stick. A dry piece of weed, it's actually a weed. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just start, I'll just break this in these pieces like that. That's beautiful. Oh, and it's nice and soft. Yeah. Now, I don't know what that is right there, but we won't worry about it. Do you like to eat fried okra? Yes. Me too. That's the way I like it. As a matter of fact, that's about the only way I like it. I will put a little bit in soup occasionally. Now, it, will it put another okra out of that spot? No. Okay. You'll put one out here and put here at, the, at each leaf joint. Now that's going to be a new stem coming out there. Okay. Just like this stem coming off the bottom down there. Do you really have to have a lot of space between plants? Because I just don't have no. as much space. No. Matter of fact, most people will plant okra this far apart. Two inches? Yeah. Okay. I do it just because I like for it to make these side shoots. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, it is. Going down here. It would... okay. Do you just come along and pick those off? You can spray them. They're hard to control. What they do is they carry a wilt. Oh. And no. they will just devastate your cucumbers. With, I'll show you that thing right there. Huh? Is that one of them? That, Adults? That, that's one of these eggs that's hatched out. What is that thing? That is a juvenile stink bug. Oh, brother. Well, this is a juvenile. He's not an adult yet. He will molt many, many times and he'll get on up to be that big. Will it be green or brown? This will be gray. Okay, and that's what that egg right there is. So what I'll do is I'll just take them and put them out on the ground and they won't hatch. Here's one that's a little bit larger. They molt and they do that. Now, okay, this is an adult. Oh, you got the adult. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Seen plenty of those. Yeah. This is Japanese eggplant. Okay. And how it's different is in how it grows. And you've probably seen it in Oriental markets. So you've got this one, this one, you got another one over there. Maybe. What kind of pest bob is this? Something called a flea beetle. See it right there? Oh boy. You see him fly away? And they make these little holes in it. Okay. And that will, if you don't do something, they will eventually make enough holes that, see like this leaf right here? Oh, This that's... leaf is destroyed from them. So the leaf itself doesn't, isn't able to produce anything for you. There's one right there. Whoops. Did you see him jump? They jump like a flea. There he is right there, I think. Oh yeah. See him right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're tiny. And that's but an adult size? That's an adult size there. I don't see a juvenile right here. Juveniles are gold in color. Oh, that's just a little hopper. He don't, he's not a problem. Okay. Okay, so there's another beetle right down there. Whoops, he got away. Okay, right here I got a row of red kidney beans. This is a row of pink kidney beans and this is a row of pinto beans you think you're going to have enough beans <laughs> yeah yeah i'll let some of them go to dry this is a row of potatoes this is a row of baby lima butter beans
We'll wrap some potatoes. And that's the, the vine from the potato that's died, finished up. And there's little potatoes on it, but that's not what we're looking for. How do you store your potatoes? Put them in a five gallon bucket and set them downstairs in the basement. That looks like it's about at least a pound. Probably. An interesting point as you can go by. Uh huh. You see how the ground is cracking right there? Mm hmm. That tells you that there's a larger potato underneath there. Ah. What should make me be? Whoop. I did it again though. Oh. Oh, it was a big potato. Mm hmm. So that was a potato there. And there's uh, one there, one there, one there, one underneath it. And there's probably another one or two in there somewhere. Smaller potatoes like this and this and that is better. This is not too bad. But one that's as big as that one over there, that's too big. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that looks delicious. Can I eat those? Yes. All right. Mm. If, it, if it's really ripe, it should be sweet. Mm. So good. Yeah. So this tree that I'm standing by is a yellow poplar, and I, I can't even begin to reach around. I can't even reach halfway around it. I'm guessing that this tree is probably 250, 300 years old, and I don't cut these big trees because they were here back when the Indians roamed this country. You know, before the white man settled here, they were maybe small trees, and once you cut them, they're gone gone forever you know now true other trees come on but you know they don't give it these dogwoods these are all dogwoods these smaller trees out of here they seem to me like they were that large 40 years ago when I moved here because they're a slow growing tree they don't oh. put on a whole lot of growth and they don't get very tall either that's that's pretty large dogwoods right there but in the springtime when they are bloomed it's just brilliant white up in there with the, the white blooms of these dogwoods. Beautiful. So, do you have any idea how many kinds of trees you have on this in your Ooh. little forest? I, uh, no, I could probably name real ten real quick. You know, mm -hmm. oak and beech and dogwood and pine and redbud and poplar and uh, sweet gum and black gum and sour wood. Do you have any elm? No, the elms, are, as you know, died out. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was wondering if maybe you've had one. There might be <laughs> a small one somewhere around here mm -hmm. that, that I haven't seen. Yeah. Yeah. How much of your nine acres is in forest? Uh, ha about half. You know, when I interviewed Barefoot Farmer in Tennessee, he was talking about the importance of, of having forest near where you're growing your vegetables because the whole mycelium fungi in the forest right. feeds into your that's true. into your plants. Right. We think insects and we think all insects are bad, but that's not true. There's a lot of good insects and the forest becomes or woodlands becomes home home place. While if there are any wild bees, they could be living in a hollow tree, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, of course, you got the birds. Mm -hmm. they're, they're going to be nested here in the trees. Do you have skunks and raccoons and possums and all that? Yeah. All of those? Yeah. Snakes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kay, as we are walking out through here, going out to the garden area, if I tell you to stop, that means you stop in mid-stride because I have seen probably a snake that you didn't see, and I don't want you to step on it because there are copperheads here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and they're very poisonous. Oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> well, I haven't seen a copperhead now in probably five years. Oh. You know what? We're back to the farmers again, okay? I don't like the copperheads. But there's a lot of other snakes that aren't poisonous. Yeah, like rat snakes are rat good snakes, to have Rat snakes, that's right. Black snakes and uh, king snakes. Garden things snakes. Things like that, garter snakes. They're not here anymore. They're gone. Used to be, if I was out there and I was a bush hog in that field, as I'm running the tractor, I would see little, what they call, we call them field rats or field mice. And they're about that long, okay? And they would be scurrying, get, you know, getting out of the way. You can go out there now and you can bush hog that field and you probably won't see a one.
Wow. I don't know why. I mean, well, I have my suspicion, but I don't know for sure, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, we got five blueberry plants in here, and they've, they've probably been here 20 years, because I planted them. When I planted them, they were only about that tall, you know, and they've grown. Now, I do cut them at the top to keep them from getting... You see this bird netting? That's what this is. This is bird netting. Um, that's mm -hmm. what keeps the birds from stealing all the blueberries because they will get them all. It's just plain old three-quarter inch bird netting. You want the blueberry to be dead right, but the bird will get it when it's about three-quarters right. And you they get do it. nothing. And the squirrels will get it and the chipmunks will get it. Rattlesnake pole beans. And this is my second planting. Yeah. And they're just now uh, starting to bloom. Here's a bloom right here. As a matter of fact, here's some tiny, tiny, and I do mean tiny, uh, two little tiny <laughs> green yeah. beans. Those are tiny. They are very tiny at that point. Oh, here's some that's just a little bit larger. Mm-hmm. Now, in just three or four days, that'll be ready to pick. Really? Three or oh, four yeah, days? Oh, yeah, yeah, they'll go fast. This was cucumbers, and you can see how dead they are. I showed you a spotted cucumber beetle out there. There's also one called a striped cucumber beetle. What they do is they carry a wilt. And so when they come in and they suck the juice out of the plants, what they do, they also inject some of their juice in there to make that juice come out easier. Oh. And that's what transmits the wilt. You got one? No, well, no, that's not a striped cucumber beetle. That's another one of the, the stink bugs. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply diatomaceous earth to these uh, eggplants to help control the flea beetles. Now they do say to be careful about not breathing this when you're doing it. Now if you just put it a little bit like that, it would not be effective. You gotta get it on there pretty heavy. If you don't, it won't it won't work. Whoop, he jumped. So you gotta put this on, and then of course after every rain you gotta come out here and do it again. And I didn't do it because uh, you were coming and I was gonna do just what we're doing right now. Now this is a super sweet 100 cherry tomato and so if you come in here and look at how it how it grows uh, it'll make these long I call them trusses like that right there mm -hmm. and see there's another one right there and there's another one down there cluster mm -hmm. clusters trusses how we want to call them mm -hmm. and these things will grow on up and lay over the top of here and this here will go on over here and they go up here on top of this trellis and, and lay up here. Now this is another blight that gets on them. I don't know what it is even, but when it starts, it'll go to the top of the plant really very quick. And it'll be finished. Yeah. Yeah. When you have your tomatoes all together like that and something affects one of them right beside it, does it spread? Do you notice that it spreads? Well, here's this plant right here. I guess the answer is no. Looking pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So the answer is no. Yeah. Um, it tends to come from in the ground. And one of the best things you can do is what I've done here is put some, put something down. It could be straw, could be leaves as I'm using here to prevent any soil from splashing back up on your bottom leaves because the, the splash up of the soil is, transmits the, uh, the fungus. Oh, so this is a sucker. And what I want to do is I'm going to break it out just like that. I'm going to take this leaf off of it. I'm going to cut this leaf back to about half and this leaf back to about half and we'll root that. In water? And No, I'm just going to stick it in soil. Okay, so these are ones that I had broken and stuck in this pot before. Mm -hmm. So let's open or let's take it out and see if they've actually started making roots. And that one is blooming so I don't have any doubt that it's making some kind of roots. I guess it works. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it works. Okay, that one's got small roots. Okay. And that one's got small roots. Oh, that's a great tip, Charles. Thank you. Well, it works. Is it good luck if a praying mantis is on your backpack? Huh? <laughs> as long as you're not a butterfly, because they will eat the butterflies. Hmm. It's checking me out.
this is my great friend Charles Hancock old Alabama gardener OAG make sure you check out his channel he's got great how to to do everything videos because <laughs> he, he's been living for a while and he's been doing for a while so he knows how to do everything so thank you so much it was so great to see you again and uh, I just hope that I am able to get down here and, and, and I'm hope hope you just keep on going <laughs> and keep on ticking and me too and, and that we get, we get to see each other again. Yeah, well, I, I certainly hope so also. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I said the camera can't pick up how wet we are from being oh, I know. <laughs> being outside walking. I know. Oh, you, my... you have walked over, over a good portion of this place. I know. It's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.